Welcome everyone. We are so excited that you are joining us for Computer Science Education Week. Today, we are talking about how do you build an app? This is for all of our friends in preschool and kindergarten, first grade and second grade. And what we are going to do today is I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Angela, and I lead the community here at Seesaw. I was a kindergarten teacher for 15 years, and I have two kids that are now in fourth grade and seventh grade, and normally I work in Minnesota, but today I'm in California because I wanted to be at Seesaw headquarters. We are going to get to meet Adrian. He's one of the co-founders of Seesaw. That means he had the idea for making Seesaw. You are going to hear the steps about building an app and we are going to answer your questions. But before we meet Adrian, there are gonna be two fancy words that you might hear today during this presentation. The first one is code and the second one is test. And if you hear those fancy words, you don't have to say, I heard it, I heard it. Just to have kind of a silent signal where maybe if you hear that word, you put your hands on your knees. And then we'll know that you heard it and we'll be thinking about what some of those words mean. So let's get going and meet Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Hi, everyone. Um, as Angela said, I'm one of the co-founders of Seesaw and I grew up in Texas. I studied art and computer science in school and now I live in California. I'm so excited to be here with you today. Now, I realize you might not all know where California is. Maybe you have a map like this up in your classroom somewhere where that big red arrow is, is where San Francisco is, which is where we are right now. This is probably one of the things you might recognize if you've ever been to San Francisco <laughs> or seen it in a movie. But we work in downtown in a tall office building and we're on floor seven and that's where everyone who works at Seesaw in San Francisco is. This is what our office looks like inside. This is where we all gather together and eat lunch. And this is what my desk looks like. <laughs> and as you can see, I have a computer on my desk. And computers are really everywhere. Of course, people use computers when they work, but traffic lights have computers in them, microwaves have computers in them, airplanes have computers, video games are really just computers inside. And lots of different kinds of jobs use computers, which is one of the reasons I'm so excited to talk with you about it today. So artists, doctors, teachers all use computers. And astronauts, runners, and writers need to use computers too. So when we think about a computer, there are certain things that can be very hard to do with a computer. And when we build an app, we try to take some problem that someone has and make it much easier for a real person to use. So let's talk about the steps to build an app today. The first step is always to take a moment and think about why you wanna build your app. Is it to help people? Is it to solve a problem? Are you just wanting to have fun? Like maybe you wanna make a game. Once you've figured out what you wanna do, either what problem you want, or um, if you want to just do something fun, start writing down some ideas, make a plan, talk to people, and get a sense of how your app might work and what it might do. This was our plan for a very early, early version of Seesaw. Uh, we even called it P2. It wasn't even called Seesaw yet. And it was very, very early. You can see that all you could do was add a photo or upload a photo. But it was a very simple place to start. Once you have an idea then of what you wanna do, you have your plan together, you have to tell the computer what to do. And just like people can read books and you read the words on the page, computers can also read. They can't read books, but they can read code. And this is an example of some code. This is actual code that we run at Seesaw. And these are the instructions that tell the computer what to do. The great thing about telling the computer what to do is it will do exactly what you tell it to. <laughs> so you get to be the boss of the computer. You get to tell it what to do. Computers are really good at some things and not as good at others. Let's talk about that a little bit. So computers are really fast at math, like mm -hmm. adding and subtracting and dividing and multiplying. Um, they're also really good at, at finding words. 
but there are a lot of things that you are better at than computers are. <laughs> Let's see what those are. So one is being creative. Computers don't know what to do. They don't know how to solve a problem. So you get to be the creative person who comes up with that. They also don't understand what people want. They aren't people themselves. So they have no <laughs> idea what a person actually wants. So that's the first step to building an app. We think about what problem we're trying to solve. We make a plan. We tell the computer what to do. But this is just the first part. Right. Because any time you start by telling the computer what to do, remember, you get to be the boss of the computer. The problem is sometimes the computer does exactly what you tell it to do, <laughs> and it turns out it's not what you actually want. What you want is for it to do something else. So you have to test it and figure out what works and what doesn't, and then improve it. So this was a very early version of Seesaw, and we forced everyone to type in a code in order to join. And this was too much work. We tested it and we found this did not work very well. So you were trying it out. And we were trying it yeah. out. And we came up with a different idea after testing it to use a QR code that people could scan. You might have some of these in your classroom and you can scan it and then you can get into your class really quickly and that worked a lot better. That's an example of a way we improved Seesaw after testing it. After you've done this a few times and you feel like it's working pretty well, the next step is to share it with everyone so that other people can get to use it. This was what Seesaw looked like when we first built it. You can see it's a little bit more advanced than earlier, but it's still not anywhere near what we can do with and it today. And we keep changing it, We right? keep changing it. That well, was from yeah. 20, 2015. Exactly. So. Lots of ha has happened. So that was really, really a fast explanation of how you create an app. And what we want to do now is we want to take some time to answer your questions. And in a moment, I'm going to talk to my colleague, Emily, who has been watching all your questions coming in to, to see where we should start. So Emily, do, you, do we want to start with some shout outs first and then we'll go into questions? Yes, we have people watching from all over the United States. We have some friends visiting us from Washington. We have Miss Brown's first grade class from Jefferson Elementary School, second grade class in Middletown, Mrs. Gibbs class. And I'm also, for anyone that we couldn't shout out, sending you a special message because we're so excited that you're all here. But as far as questions go, we had the question, how do you make an app? Yeah. Great question. So in order to make an app, uh, you have to write some code, which is mm -hmm. remember how a computer knows what to do. And we have some resources that are linked to this that are simple coding exercises that you can do with your class. So if you think you might want to make an app, uh, you can try those out and get a sense of what it's like. There's a question coming in from Miss um, Hutzelman's class. Why was it called uh, P2 at first when you started building it? Well, before we knew what we were going to call or even really if it was going to work or not, we just needed to call it something. So we just made up a name and the name didn't mean anything. It was just P2. Um, <laughs> probably there was a P1. I don't even remember, <laughs> but it was just something we could call it while we were working on it before we knew it would ever be called Seesaw. All right. What other questions, Emily, do we have? We have the question, what gave you the idea for Seesaw and how did you decide on the name? Ooh, great question. <laughs> so the idea for Seesaw really came from, from talking with teachers and hearing about some of the problems they ran into in the classroom. And this is a great way, anytime you're thinking about building an app, to get an idea. You don't always have to have the idea yourself. You can talk to other people and hear about problems they're having and then try to come up with a creative solution to those problems. The name for Seesaw was really came out of a brainstorming um, experience we had where we all talked about different things we remembered from school. And we really liked the idea of taking something that we remembered from school, like a Seesaw on the playground um, that was playful. Um, but at the same time, it related to the way Seesaw is a very visual um, tool, so you can see it. And we liked the fact that that also came up. So it was a combination of those two. And Lauren wants to know from Ms. Chapman's class, was it hard to make an app? <laughs> well, it's, it's never hard to start. Um, it's very easy to get started. So I would encourage anyone who wants to try it to, to get started. 
But anytime you're solving a problem for another person, it's hard because you have to understand what is their problem and then you try something out and you see if you really solved it or not. And usually you have to do that many times to truly solve their problem. So that process is often very hard and takes a long time. And Mason from Miss Williams class wants to know, do video game designers follow these same steps? Video games or anything that you program a computer to do will be very similar. You always have to think about what you want to do first and make a plan and then tell the computer what to do and test it. So those things will be very much something you would encounter making a video game too. I'm going to do a couple more shout outs while Emily's getting ready with her next question. So we have uh, Miss Rubin's class. We have Mr. J uh, Luke's class, Miss uh, Fauci's class. We have Miss Solheim's class with us. So many classes, Miss Bird's class, Mr. Burt's class, um, all over. So what should we answer next, Emily? We had a great question come in from a kindergarten class and they were wondering if kids were allowed to make apps or maybe some ideas to get them started. Yeah, absolutely you are allowed to. You you can tell a computer to do whatever you want to do. In fact, it's very hard to truly break a computer. So try some things out and see if you can get it to work. Don't be afraid. Um, and you know, an easy way to start is just make something that you want. You know. You can, if you have an idea for a game or you have an idea of an app that you'd like, then draw some sketches for it mm -hmm. and you can just make whatever you would like. I like the idea too, they can just start building with stuff they have. You That's can totally kind of, build yeah. with, with stuff you have or if you have a favorite, uh, if you have a favorite toy or movie or anything and you want to make an app about that, like you can, you can make an app about anything you want. So just start, start being creative and see where it takes you. So Laura in Miss Kim's class wants to know how old were you when you started making apps, Adrian? Well, let's see. I first started learning about computers when I was in elementary school, and I got my first computer at home when I was in fifth grade. So you all are way ahead of me already <laughs> because you all have computers that you have access to. And then I just, from then on in middle school and high school, I learned more and more, and then I studied it in college. So. I've been doing it for a long time, but I do it because I love it, and it's really fun to build things. I had a class actually ask, what's your favorite part of working at Seesaw? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, it's a great question. Um, I love the fact that every day we get to build something that's used by real teachers and students, and we get to hear from all of you about what's working and what's not. We get to test it and improve it, just like we talked about earlier. And then I love all the people that I get to work with at Seesaw every day because the problems we're trying to solve can't be solved by just one person. It's really about the team working together, and I love that. Which goes with this question that Elise wants to know, who helped you make your app? It's a great question. Um, when you're very early on, you can make an app by yourself, but you'd find pretty soon after that, you need a group of people to really work with you. So we'll work with engineers who are experts at writing code and designers who think about what the app looks like and how it works and people who are testing. And then once you actually put the app out into the world, then you need lots of people like Angela to help <laughs> people learn how to use it and help give us feedback about what works and what doesn't. So lots of different people go into making a successful app. And students too. And students we too. hear a lot from, from teachers when they're working with their students to say, well, this didn't work so well, so we need to kind of make it better. So we're always listening to your ideas too. Um, Emily, What we have so many classes here, so shout outs. Um, Boy, it's a long list. We have Ms. Chapman's class, Ms. Bouchard's class, Ms. Harding's class. What question should we answer here? We only have about maybe one more minute. Well, we had so many good questions. It's really hard to pick, but one student actually noticed the draft button and they were wondering how do we decide what new things to add to Seesaw? That's a great question. and. We want to be careful about what we add. We don't want to just add lots of things and make the app way too complicated. But when we hear about a real problem that someone's having, like in this case, uh, we heard from teachers that sometimes students do work 
but there's something that needs to get fixed in it. Mm -hmm. And rather than having to delete it, it would be great to be able to send it back to the student to make changes. And so that's where the idea for the draft button came from. But we try to be thoughtful about making sure that anything we add is solving a real problem for someone, that it's not just a cool feature to add, but it really relates back to a problem that someone's experiencing with Seesaw. And maybe you were all ran out of time and you yeah. want to work on your, your creation a little bit more. So that's also helpful with that too. Um, I think one more question, Adrian, is how many times do you think you've failed while making Seesaw? Like well, you've made yeah. lots of mistakes, I imagine. There are lot, lots and lots of things that I thought were great ideas. <laughs> and then we tried them and it turned out it was not such a good idea. It didn't actually work. So one of the things that I've learned is to be very humble and to realize that anytime there's an idea, it's worth trying. So you see, sometimes you're surprised something works that you think wouldn't work and other times something that you're sure was gonna work doesn't end up working, but that's part of the process. And that's what's important that you're always learning, not that you're always right. Right, I, I think that's a great one. And all the things that you're learning in your classroom today really build on the skills that you need to create and solve problems. So keep working hard there. And you might wanna try creating too. We have on our website, um, maybe you wanna make a new class icon you could try to design that and we really want to thank you for tuning in today and spending some of your class time with us and we are excited for you to learn and share what you are doing this week for computer science education week and we couldn't get to everyone's questions today but we hope that we answered some of them and always feel free to reach out to us on twitter at seesaw um, if you have more questions so thanks everyone for coming today thank you bye